right, what is up you guys, and of course as always, welcome back to an episode from your truly, the Skyrunder. As you guys can see our title, we're going to discuss the Pokemon Direct, and um, I'm just going to first respond to people's predictions, or rather the Sinnoh remakes, but also my own few thoughts, and why I think they're more likely to happen. And of course, if I'm right, I'm probably making another video, and if I'm wrong... I'm gonna, I'm gonna act like that never happened. That's, that's, that's my strategy. So first and foremost, the predictions of the Sino remakes. I think it's too early. Um, I do. I have no doubt those games are coming, and uh, it wouldn't surprise me if um, they come out either like late this year and they just are uh, announcing it in, you know, before E3 as you usually do, or if they even go further and I should wait out. There are. Some parallels to people making assumptions of the Pokemon Let's Go series going for a Yoda remake, and I think that's one is more likely to happen, uh, mainly because of the visits of Masuda going to old places that was the Yoda inspired inspired by them. But like I said, speculations. That really is. I'm. <laughs> I it feels very reachy, and we have nothing to go on. So the direct is what's gonna dictate whether or not those rumors are true. But I know people are super passionate about Sinnoh remakes and. If they are announced already, there are going to be a lot of people very happy, as much as it's going to be, you know, bringing back the modern National Dex movement, going back at it again, and um, that's a scary thought. I don't believe that narrative has died off quite yet. It might never, really, but, um, yeah, I mean, I'm a Dexter myself, and I've really been quite upfront with that, but I also know the difference between spreading a good message and just spamming. Um, that needs to be considered. Make the difference yourself, but don't do that by actually harass others. I don't believe that's the way to go. Enough about that. Um, <laughs> anyway, my own predictions. Um, I absolutely think it's going to start off with... Um, oh, should you consider also... Um, this could be a slight spoiler of the Pokedex itself. And uh, there are things confirmed by data miners that isn't confirmed by Pokemon itself. So if you don't want to know what's in the game, um, stop listening. Right now, right? Here we go. Um, first and foremost, I think the unannounced Gigantamax form is going to have a schedule. I believe the Snorlax event are just wrapping up this week. And um, it would go over very nicely if they showcased a new kind of um, schedule with new Gigantamax and coming out. Not only are one of the Gigantamax forms being that um, Steel Goliath. Um, Mellow Metal, something like that, right? So I can't, I possibly said the name wrong, but he is one of those unannounced Pokemon that are going to influence the meta quite a lot. And even though it's Dynamax exclusive form, will be banned by Smoke and Sand, that it still is a superb Pokemon to get into this game, as it's very well the best steel type of this generation. Uh, there really is nothing to it, it is superb in so many ways, and probably could be suspected for that very reason. It is. Magnificent, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see us dealing with that. But not only that, I think there are three or four games that make this form not yet released or showcased. But we also have roughly 40 Pokemon that are in the game but not in the game. Um, they're not accustomed to Pokedex, and these are Pokemon like you know, the starter Pokemon, Blastoise and Venusaur, and their pre evolutions to that. Uh, we also have the the regular forms of the Galarian forms, and some of these Galarian forms also have Alolan forms. Those are also in the game. Look at the likes of Raichu, for example, who has an Alolan form. Uh, regular Weezing, regular Rapidash. A lot of those things standing out. Um, and those are easily like 20 plus Pokemon already there. But then we have a few legendaries. So Kyurem, we have Sekram, um, Reshiram, and then you have the Sword Quartet trio. But there are Quartet in Keldeo, uh, Cobalion, Trakion, Verizion. Um, and there are a few more like legendaries. Alolan starters are in the game, um, and then you have the Alolan legendaries. And either they get included like in the Pokemon Home app, which we're gonna cover afterwards, or they're going to showcase that these are in the game and gonna be distributed a few exclusive raids. I could only wish that's the route they take. That yeah, if you don't have the Pokemon in your older games, you will be able to get them through these exclusive raids. And um, I do believe um, the VGC rules were very specific. Pokemon you can only catch in Galarian uh, Pokedex are going to be the one that you can use in VGC. 
either being that specific because you can catch these Pokemon in the game, um, or they're being that specific because you can't. And uh, either way, it's gonna be interesting as a few of these Pokemon will definitely shift the meta a lot. Verisium, for example, is probably one of those Pokemon that will be very exciting <laughs> to use this generation as it's the only sword, and or I mean sword, only fighting and grass type in this game. And it will turn out to be one of the best grass types in the game by its definitions alone. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm actually super excited. I want these Pokemon in the game already. And that brings me down to um, Pokemon Home. I think the reason it's 20 minutes is because they're going to introduce Pokemon Home, how to use it, how to send over Pokemon, and depending on what it's either through the Pokebank or through the Pokemon Let's Go, this is how you implement them into the game. I'm convinced that's the big part, as this will most likely be like Pokemon Go or Pokemon, Pokemon Bank. Uh, you have to pay yearly to make this product an alternative home for your Pokemon. Um, they're probably going to showcase what you can do with Pokemon Home too, as they really just said that this is a you know a hub for uh, the Pokemon Go app, for those Pokemon you catch there, and um, yeah, the Pokemon games itself, and let's go. They're going to be alternative to titles, they're probably going to implement, if you can send them to a specific game, what you can do with them on this hub. And I think that's going to be a game on its own, so that will be very interesting to see if they do something with that, but at least... Due to the length of the Pokemon event or Pokemon Direct itself, um, it's very likely that's going to be the main focus. Um, so I don't see another game coming out, and if they are, um, it will be very, very, very bad timing. I don't believe Sword and Shield is enough all to pull that off yet. And um, I think there are good things with Pokemon Ghost. The Raids is absolutely phenomenal. It's something that should have... Implemented years ago, and it's actually a great way to introduce other players to certain Pokemon, and more so, you can add up with your friends, and you'll know, we can catch this Pokemon together. That's phenomenal. If anything gonna come out for me when it comes to Pokemon Sword and Shield, well, I think it's a rush game and a poorly game at times. These are good implementations. It's one of the best uh, for sure, and it would definitely, if anything, gonna keep this game alive. It'll probably be something like that. It's absolutely not the Pokedex, it, <laughs> but everything else it does actually quite good, and it's interesting to see if they can develop this further. Um, another thing I really hope for, and this is something, if they don't announce a game this year at all, it's not going to be announced, of course, like I said, now anyway, but they have a yearly release, and if it's not, Yoto, let's go. I hope for first time they make a DLC, and I hope this DLC will be something grander. Um, maybe not a complete Pokedex. No, I don't care for that a lot. <laughs> but I want the, the, the roster to be expanded. Um, it would be phenomenal if they already say something in the lines of they're going to be Pokemon added. You know, we heard people complaining about um, the reduced Pokedex. This doesn't do it. We're releasing an Aria, basically like, like Wild Aria, but this is Kanto based. You can catch Kanto based Pokemon. Not all the Pokemon will be there, but there will be Pokemon from Kanto there. And maybe from Johto. And just gonna keep on adding stuff like that would be incredible DLC, and I think they know that. So I think they don't want to do that uh, as um, it would have been the talk of the year <laughs> for sure. But yeah, like I said, Pokemon Go absolutely and future raids. I, I really think that is as simple as they're gonna go and uh, just showcase the new Pokemon in the game because I believe showing Mel Metal uh, in this Pokemon Direct would be phenomenal. That was going to sp inspire people that you know what. This Pokemon is in the game, and then we're going to have um, an event with the Sword Quartet, or whatever, and these going to be raid exclusive. Uh, I really hope they do that, as instead of locking these Pokemon to only be accessible through home, if they did, you know what, This you can catch this Decidueye throughout February, which is together with Incineroar and um, Primarina, through February to Moss, wonderful. People will get excited as they get exclusive Pokemon that they haven't catched yet, and it will affect the meta. Um, that is something I hope for. Um, I, I'm clearly reaching right now, and just really, if, if I was you, you do this myself, how would I do it? If I were money hungry and wanted good press, how would I do it? I am money hungry, so I, can, I fit the bar. <laughs> but anyway, those are my few thoughts. Um, I really hope to upload 
a follow-up video with things that went down if you guys are interested in that or interested in that i don't believe this content is very shameless and really really boring so or not boring but lazy it's absolutely lazy um, so that's it guys as always for watching take care